Hi, my name's Chris Baker, and as someone who's had a fairly major role in the last five Spider-Man console games, I'm incredibly interested in what Insomniac is doing with their PS4 Spidey game. It's the first one I've had nothing to do with since Spider-Man 3 and Friend or Foe 10 years ago. I'd like to think I have a fairly unique perspective on last night's demo at the Sony press conference, so have a listen and see if you agree. The very first thing we hear is that shots have been fired at Fisk Tower. Now, of course, most of you probably know that's talking about the Kingpin, but what I find really interesting here is that the building that we see is still under construction. So is this the Fisk Tower from the comics under construction right now? That's pretty interesting because maybe by the end of the game we'll see it fully constructed. It's fairly iconic. It looks like this. We also got it into Lego Marvel superheroes. I just love what Spidey's about to say right here. Yuri, I'm here. here. That line is great for two reasons. One, he's obviously talking to a character named Yuri, in this case, Yuri Watanabe. And in the comics, Yuri herself has an alternate secret identity, the Wraith. We'll see if the game goes there in any way. Maybe it's an origin story. But the second reason that line is great is because Yuri Lowenthal is the voice actor for Spider-Man in this game. So in a sense, he's introducing both Yuri Watanabe and himself with that line. Incidentally, you can hear more of Yuri Lowenthal as Spider-Man right now on your mobile device with Spider-Man Unlimited. And I'm personally biased toward his work as Spider-Man in one of my favorite games I ever got to work on at Marvel, Marvel Pinball, where he is the voice of Spider-Man in the Amazing Spider-Man table. What do you see? Find the rest. Boss wants them dead. Looks like the demons are moving in on Fisk's territory. So these demons that Spidey's talking about are actually known as the inner demons in the comics, and they're pretty much the greatest goons you could hope to create as a game developer because they all wear masks. I don't know if they're going to follow through with the fact that they're all basically indestructible or they always come back from the dead in this game, but it makes sense that they would. And we're about to meet who they actually serve in a few minutes here. As someone who worked on the Amazing Spider-Man 2 video game, which I'll be the first to admit was not one of the best Spider-Man games of all time by any means, I'm actually pretty struck at how similar this is to one of the early stages in that game. It just looks way, way better. So here we have a classic Spidey gaming stealth move. Looks really cool. And then something really interesting happens. It's almost like a, a spider trap of some sort. I'm really interested to learn more about this particular mechanic. The one-liners are essential, and I'm so glad that's there. The way that Empire Sanitation stands out right there, it makes me feel like it's important. As far as I know, it's not from the comics, but I could be wrong. I don't think Stan Lee and Steve Ditko ever intended for Spidey's eyes to move like that, but... It's awesome, and I'm so glad they stole that from the MCU. And here we see our first real taste of combat with multiple foes at once. It kind of reminds me of Arkham Asylum, and also it therefore reminds me of the Amazing Spider-Man games. But I guess we actually have to play it to know that that's how it actually is. And let's just take a moment to admire all the detail in the background here. Are there Easter eggs? I don't know. But up there at the top, we've got some sort of a construction language of some sort, I suppose. Those red arrows, and it says I-R-C-A-S-I -S -S or T. I can't make it out. Uh, then to the right, you've got a free shipping label, and there's some numbers on there. Maybe that refers to something. And then there's the BIC number 258. To my knowledge, there are no Marvel Comics initialed BIC that have made it up to number 258. So it's probably not a comic book reference, but maybe number 258 was chosen because it's a very key issue in the history of Spider-Man. And do the last four digits of the phone number for Empire Sanitation mean anything? Is this hinting at perhaps an appearance by the Tarantula? Probably not, but you never know. Think those tattoos mean anything? Hey, Willie. You. Nice jumpsuit. Slimming. Stay out of my business. 
Wait, the demons. Who's their leader? Keep my men alive and maybe I'll tell you. So it seems the Kingpin can FaceTime from prison. Sure, why not? He's a Kingpin. Earlier in the video, we saw Spider-Man take out a couple guys with the hook from a crane, and that was pretty cool. It indicates we're going to see some pretty interactive backgrounds in this, and here comes one right now. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's hope that the whole game has these kinds of things with this kind of frequency. Oh, and did you see that? Let's take a look at that again real quick. Notice how Spider-Man makes sure that the inner demon that he's fighting there does not fall over the edge because Spider-Man doesn't kill and I have the feeling that might actually be an automated thing that happens whenever a character kind of goes over the edge. I have a feeling that Insomniac has made it so that Spider-Man catches them before they can fall to their doom because Spider-Man will not let anyone die. His mantra is no one dies. Is that a Higgs field? That's actually really cool. <laughs> Another great, simple, humorous line. I hope the whole game is like this, because that's Spider-Man. Fisk, your men are safe. Your turn. Who runs the demons? You're about to find out. Check the roof. He's here? So now here finally is arguably the most important newish Spider-Man villain of the last 10 years. I would actually say he, it's pretty inarguable, Mr. Negative. Here he's actually a little different than I was expecting. It's really rare to see him as kind of both a normal looking human being and this negative energy guy at the same time. He's usually completely one or the other. He's usually very protective about his secret identity. He doesn't want anyone to know that he's really Martin Lee. His Martin Lee persona is a very nice, very humble man who heals everybody and runs a place called Feast, which is a homeless shelter. Wait, hold up. Spider sense. Anyway, back to Martin Lee. He runs a homeless shelter called Feast. And his his nice guy persona knows nothing about the totally evil man who is Mr. Negative, who kind of shows up and is just basically evil incarnate. Uh, so Mr. Negative knows about Martin Lee. Martin Lee doesn't know about Mr. Negative. We'll see how that plays out in the game. This right here is looking really scripted, but also really awesome. So script away. I think it's fair to say that if this isn't the best web slinging we've ever experienced in an open world Spidey game, it's gonna be a little disappointing. A helicopter with a wrecking ball? It's complicated. Turns out Martin Lee is running the demons. The guy who runs the homeless shelter? She's talking about Feast, which I just mentioned. you think Norman Osborn for mayor will be a plot point? That helicopter is destroying the city. I know. You need to bring it down. I know. Maybe you could superhero a little faster? <sighs> Working on it, Yuri. And see the Ellie Jude Hotel right there? That is actually from the comics, Amazing Spider-Man number 665. And thank you, Ryan Stegman, for not only drawing that, but also pointing out on Twitter that Ellie and Jude are your niece and nephew, and telling me specifically which issue to look for. Ever since last year's reveal of the game, a lot of people have been talking about the big white spider that looks like Venom's spider that he has. And while I certainly think the odds are in favor of it being the Spider-Man costume for the game, I would personally love for it to be an indicator that you have a lot of control over your own personal suit and how you can design it. A lot of the appeal of Spider-Man in general is that he is the everyman superhero, so what better way to do that than to have Insomniac allow you to design your own spider costume? Alright, so here Spidey is facing Mr. Negative directly, and this exchange right here I find really interesting. Why are you doing this? Because no one else will! The way Mr. Negative is talking right there, it makes it sound like he's doing something noble, or at least believes he is. There's really no sign of that in the comics. He's pretty much just a really bad guy when he's Mr. Negative. So I wonder if they're going to kind of change his persona a little bit. Maybe he'll have some kind of twisted but somewhat relatable cause, like Magneto or somebody like that. 
Actually, let's rewind for a second back to this shot right here. Just a cool little Easter egg if you look on the helicopter there. AMFN15 seems like a pretty obvious nod to the first appearance of Spider-Man in Amazing Fantasy number 15. I've seen some people suggesting that that's not Peter Parker, but... Come on, Pete, you got this! Seems pretty obvious unless uh, another Marvel Pete suddenly got spider powers. And this is just an all-around great Spidey moment, topped off with a pretty awesome Spidey pose. And just when you think it's over, there's a lot of cool stuff left. The first time I watched this and I saw Martin Lee just sitting there seemingly normal, I thought it would actually just be Martin Lee with no memory of what just happened, but then... Now, if this is anything like the comics, this is really bad news for Spider-Man because what happens when Mr. Negative touches you is it brings out your dark side completely. This actually did happen to Spider-Man in the comics. It even happened to Aunt May. And it's way worse than any influence that the black suit may have ever had on him. It makes me wonder if there's a portion of this game where you are evil Spider-Man doing bad things. That could be really cool. And I love how this logo is completely new, and it really does kind of say to me this is its own distinct Spider-Man with its own distinct universe, as if the suit didn't do that already. On, dude, and here's the part that's blowing everybody's minds. Miles. It's Miles Morales. In case you don't know, Brian Michael Bendis introduced this character in 2011 after the actual death of Peter Parker in the Ultimate Universe, and he's been a fan favorite ever since. We could be seeing his only appearance in this entire game, but I have a feeling that they're building a universe here and they could be setting up either a new Miles Morales game or maybe Spider-Man 2 is going to be a multiplayer game where it is Spider-Men, which incidentally is one of the better Spider-Man stories of the last few years. And let's go back a few frames to really the key question of this entire thing. Is this the video game debut of Genki? So let's take a minute to do some totally off the wall story predictions here. I don't think that Mr. Negative is the main bad guy of this game. In fact, I give him till the end of act one. Remember how all the marketing for Batman Arkham Origins tried to trick us into thinking that Black Mask was the big bad of the game and it was actually Joker? I think uh, we got another Black Mask situation going on here. Although Mr. Negative is awesome and if it does turn out to be his game, I'm totally cool with that too. But I really do think this is gonna turn out to be a more prominent villain. We did see Kingpin so it could very well be his story. And given that Norman Osborn obviously has a presence in this game as mayor, there's even hints at that at their E3 booth, this could be a Green Goblin origin story, or at least it could involve the Green Goblin, because we don't know if there's a Green Goblin in this universe yet. I think it's awesome if there's not. Even cooler, maybe... They are setting things up for a sequel where it will be the Green Goblin and stuff that happens in this game leads to that. That's kind of my dream scenario. I'd love to see a legitimate Marvel games universe, even if it's just a Marvel Spider-Man universe, taking some cues from the MCU. Maybe even uh, Norman Osborn becomes the Green Goblin after the credits. How cool would that be? But most importantly... Let's just hope it's a great game. I really sincerely think it will be, especially since my friend Brian Intahar is the creative director on it. You hear me, Brian? You better do my Spidey Boy proud. Please don't screw this up! I hope you enjoyed this analysis of the playable demo from the Sony press conference. If you like the way I talk about superhero video games, I've got some other videos on this channel that might interest you, as well as a book called Wrong Retro Games. You messed up our comic book heroes. It's on Amazon. Enjoy the rest of E3, everybody. Bye.